Hi, this is Daniel here, and I want to give you a quick update today on something that's really important for you to be aware of if you're sourcing products in China. But really, if you're sourcing anything from anywhere, I'm going to mention two concepts as well here that are important for you to understand that aren't talked about much. So, you know, whether you're sourcing products in China right now or not, I think you should pay attention to this video. But now, first of all, if you are sourcing products in China or are planning to, then, you know, this is really important to be aware of right now. And it's really unfolding. And I'm, you know, bringing this to, to your attention basically ahead of the curve. So this is something that's going to become, I predict, a, you know, issue and a problem for a lot of people. But it's just starting to happen now. And I just returned from China slash Hong Kong and became, you know, I'm really starting to become aware of this and I'm seeing this happen at the moment. And I just gave my uh, students in Apex Seller an update on this. Uh, but even for those of you that may not be as advanced, I think this is still relevant because it can impact anyone, even if you're about to source your first product. And of course, if you're an established seller, then this becomes even more important for you. So what am I talking about? Well, as I'm sure you know, China right now is going through sort of an economic slowdown and a bit of a downturn uh, because of the trade war and all of that stuff that's going on. And of course, you as a seller, you know that this is a bit challenging to deal with or can be, and it does affect us as sellers, but it doesn't only affect us. It also affects the manufacturers in China and the suppliers. And anytime there's like a contraction with anything, uh, and economically speaking as well, you know, not just theory, but in practice, uh, the implications of an economic slowdown or a downturn, things get more challenging, is that, you know, things basically contract, right? And out of all the suppliers and manufacturers in China, there's a certain part of them that's going to have more difficulties than others. And while everyone might, you know, suffer a bit, because they're losing business, you know, some uh, companies are switching their uh, sourcing to other countries like Vietnam uh, or going out of business because of what's going on with the tariffs. Now, obviously, the business in China for suppliers is getting hurt as well. And what's going to happen is that the, uh, the suppliers sort of on the ads here that are maybe less established, they're smaller, they're basically in a weaker position, they might not be able to sustain losses, for example, or loss of business in, in either case for, for long, you know, they're going to basically go out of business or they're going to have serious issues. They could even have cash flow issues and things like that. So that's what I want to bring to your awareness. But really for you, for us, what is important to understand here is that this can expose our businesses to a lot of new and unnecessary risk. So if you are sourcing from a less established and a smaller business in China, so a smaller manufacturer or like a trade agent or trading company, uh, you might be exposed to a lot more risk now than before because what could happen is that one day this supplier, this manufacturer, this trade agent, this trade company might simply go out of business and close their doors and without much notice. And of course, if you're selling products, let's say you have a product that's doing well, you're, you know, battling to control and manage inventory and plan for it, right? And sales might be going up. You need to really stay ahead of the curve so you don't run out of inventory, which can be a really bad thing. Obviously, a big loss in revenue there. Uh, but now the risk is that either the supplier that you're using is going to be slower, they're going to have issues because of cash flow, which can cause you to run out of inventory. Or worse yet, they might simply go out of business and close shop. And now you're definitely going to be out of inventory and you might be out of inventory for a long time because what you'll have to do is you'll have to find another supplier. And if you have a product that, you know, has been customized a bit or you have, you know, specific things, you might have your own tooling or you might even just have your own packaging and different things like that. Obviously setting that all up with a new supplier can take many months. So you might be out of one of your most important products or even a you know, big portion of your portfolio, if this happens to you for a long time, it's obviously can be devastating for your business. 
So I want to bring this to your attention now before you potentially have an unfortunate situation like this because what is happening is that some suppliers are starting to struggle. So China is doing what they can to inject cash and support the businesses and everything, but some businesses are gonna have difficulties and especially the smaller, less established suppliers. Uh, again, could be actual factors, could be trading companies, trading agents, and I'm seeing this is happening already because sometimes we prefer to work with smaller uh, suppliers because they're more flexible, it can be better to start new products with them, they might be quicker, they might have lower costs, lower MOQs, things like that. Um, but what I believe is the case for a lot of you as well is you may not really understand who you're working with. You know, that's something I've seen quite a lot. So you might think you have a great supplier, someone that's established, that's um, you know solid, but in reality, they might not be that established and they might be dependent and rely, uh, reliant on other things. So you know maybe it's a, like an assembly shop and they're reliant on their suppliers that can have issues. And you know there's all kinds of variables at play here that can basically expose you to a lot of risk right now and again this is just starting to happen I'm just seeing this starting to happen now but you know as the trade war drags on this could get worse and worse and you know if you're in Facebook groups and things like that you might start to see this kind of thing pop up where people are having uh, this problem you know oh my supplier just disappeared or told me they're going out of business you know and if you're not prepared for it then you might have a serious issue. So I wanted to give you uh, a heads up on this basically before the problems really start happening for a lot of sellers so you can take the necessary action to basically prevent this situation from happening to you uh, and this problem happening to you potentially. So what is the solution? You know, what can you do to actually uh, help mitigate this risk? Well, there's basically two things and uh, the first thing is to obviously understand your supplier. So I use an internal process for auditing everyone we work with, like factories and suppliers, and really understanding uh, you know, their situation, even like the ownership structure and things like that, to really know, you know what is this company, uh, how long have they been in business, what is the potential or the most likely you know, cash flow uh, situation or structure behind the business, you know, how is it, how is it basically a setup and how, how is it running, who is running it and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this stuff is important to understand because if you're dealing with a supplier that's really like a small shop, they might be coming across to you like a bigger business, but maybe it's you know just like a, a middleman or a, a trading agent or something, but they appear to you like a trustworthy manufacturer and they might be able to supply your products and everything, but if there's really not much substance behind that um, partner of yours when it comes to your product or your products, then this can potentially be exposing you to a lot of risk because they might not have a lot of backbone, so to speak, to go through difficulties and, and you know, a loss of business and things like that. So the first thing is to really understand who you're dealing with on a deeper level and make sure you're only really dealing with more established manufacturers right now, or at least for any product that you have that is driving substantial revenues, you should make sure that that product is being made by a supplier that is, you know, likely to basically withstand any, uh, you know, any stronger wins, so to speak, in the environment right now where they might lose some business and things like that, things might be harder, their profit margins might go down. And you know they need to be able to basically uh, sustain that until things get better again. So that's number one. Make sure that, especially for your most important products, you have solid manufacturers in place. But the second thing, and this sort of adds to this, it adds more protection, is to have a backup supplier. And especially you know for any product that is established, that's driving substantial revenues, you should have a backup supplier in place. And this isn't just because of this reason, it's just really um, how to run a professional supply chain. It's one of many things that most sellers don't do, but you really should do if you want to have 
a solid business and a professional supply chain for your uh, private label business. So how do you do this? Well, the key thing to understand with backup suppliers is you need to have them fully set up, right? So it's not enough just to know about another supplier that you could use. You need to actually go through all the steps with that supplier for them to become like a true backup supplier. Because what you have to be able to do is in case you have an issue with the first supplier, the main one, and again, this can happen at any time, they might have all of a sudden like a 90 day lead time when they used to have a 30 day lead time, they might again go out of business or you might have quality issues all of a sudden pop up or something happens to the relationship, things like that. What you need to have in place is a supplier that you can switch to immediately, right? And place an order with them. And if all you do is just know about another supplier, you have a long way to go until you can actually do that, right? You need to like do a factory audit. You need to understand them, their situation on a deeper level. You need to uh, obviously compare suppliers and choose a good one that has good pricing and good quality and all of that, right? So you need to actually get samples. You need to, you know, if you have a customized product, you really should have like a specification sheet in place to give to them to make sure that it's done exactly the same way as with the current manufacturer, right? If you have tooling with the current manufacturer, you need to basically be ready to switch that to the backup supplier. And, and actually, depending on the importance of your product, you may want to have separate tooling even made and in place with the backup supplier, uh, potentially. But you need to really think about all these things. And you need to really actually do a test order with the backup supplier to make sure that they can do it right. And if you've done all of that, then there's even more to it. But really, if you have a supplier that you now trust and you know they can make your product right in the right quality, you know, with a good lead time, at a good price, all of that, now you have a true backup supplier. And really, you could have your product made from either supplier. Uh, so instead of just having one supplier, now you have two that can make your product. And if one has an issue, you're good because you have another one, right? And one of them might have like the first one, the main one might even have just like a capacity issue at some point as you grow. Now, well, you can increase the capacity and how many products you can have made um, within you know, a reasonable amount of time because you have two suppliers. So there's a lot of benefits, but really now the, with the risk of your supplier you know, being more likely to have issues and go out of business, for any product that's driving substantial revenues, you really should have a backup supplier. Because what happens if the first one goes out of business? Again, you either need like six months to set up a new one and have the product made and you're gonna be out of stock. And if you're selling on Amazon, you know that that's gonna cost, you know, a serious loss in revenue, but also you might lose your rankings and your positions that you've, you know, basically invested into gaining on Amazon and it can really harm your business. You know, someone can come in and really take you over. So uh, yeah, extremely important to have a backup supplier for any product that is driving substantial revenues. It's totally worth the time and the investment to have this in place to dramatically reduce the risk in your business. Uh, because now if you have, again, an issue with your first supplier for any reason, but a new reason that is gonna become more uh, prominent is the, the potential issue of someone having you know, cash flow issues or going out of business. Well, now you're pretty safe because you have another supplier good to go. And most likely both of them are gonna go out of business uh, at the same time. And again, you should also make sure that both of these suppliers are solid, you understand their fundamentals and you understand them at a deeper level uh, because you don't wanna be working with a supplier that's basically you know, has no substance behind them and really it doesn't take much uh, to shake them up to the point where they go out of business. That's the risk here. And again, it's just starting to happen now. That's what I'm seeing. But I predict uh, if the trade war and, and things like that and the terrorists linger on, which I totally believe they're going to, then it's going to become you know, a bigger and bigger potential uh, pitfall and a problem for private label sellers sourcing from, from China. So. I wanted to make you aware of this and I hope this helps. 
And again, I think the main message here is that the supply chain really is becoming more and more delicate and important for private label sellers. You know, things like your costs need to be really competitive, uh, quality and things of that nature. Uh, and things that most sellers don't really pay a lot of attention to. And I'm going to include a link below this video if you want to check out a free video that I have uh, that talks about more of these systems and these things that most sellers don't pay attention to, but really you should be more of the fundamental things that support your business and, and your success. And these are the things that can either like have a dramatically negative impact on your business and cause, cause serious issues if you don't have them in place, or they're going to drive and support consistent, uh, reliable, long-term growth and success and stability for your business. So again, there's a link below the, uh, this video if you want to check out that other video and learn more about that. Um, but besides that, let me know what you think in the comments below as well. I would love to hear your thoughts on this and if this was helpful and if you have any insights to share as well and things like that. And you can also like this video if you like it. And uh, yeah, would love to have you join the conversation by commenting below and let me know what you think. But I hope this has been useful. I'll, and again, I would really take this seriously if, if I were you, if you're selling uh, products or even if you're about to source new products, you know, pay attention to, again, the suppliers that you're working with. And as soon as you have a product that's established, that's driving substantial revenues, make sure to have a backup supplier fully set up because this is your business and this kind of risk is unnecessary and you want to make sure you completely eliminate this type of unnecessary risk and you don't have this in your business as a big risk just because you don't think about it and you're maybe lazy or you don't know the process and and the systems to to put in place to prevent uh, these potential uh, very damaging issues for your business. So again, hope this has been helpful and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.